I hope everybody had a great summer. <coughs> Welcome back. Um, we have a busy year. Um, let's get the minutes approved first, and then we'll go from there. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So I moved. Do I'll I have a second? I'll second. Diane is the second. Any changes? Corrections? Deletions? Missing items? If there are, it's so long ago. I agree. Seeing none. <laughs> Uh, all in favor of approving as presented? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. It was Hank. Hank? Hmm? No, Hank. Hank, 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 Hank agreed. Okay. He was just a little late. Uh, yes. <laughs> he needs some of Sue's new prescription. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't resist. No, um, apparently not. I know. <coughs> Um, in the folder is just one substitute oh, report you. from the very end of the year. Oh, well, thank you. And I'll pass around that substitute report for you all to look at. It should give you the numbers for the entire year, which I imagine in terms of the delta are um, very close. I don't imagine there were probably very many instances last year where we needed a sub and couldn't find them. Um, it is going to be a busy year. We have four projects, which we'll discuss um, today and probably every meeting that we have um, between now and March. Uh, we have two upcoming contracts, GEA and GESS, which we'll be working on negotiating this year. Um, budget, um, one of the focuses of our goals um, when we sat down at the table last year was talking about um, doing a better job of providing the community with education about what we're doing. Um, we're going to need to continue working on that. Um, we are going to need to revisit the area agreement um, and decide exactly whether, decide whether or not there are any issues, whether or not any of the sending districts have any issues that need to be addressed, and how to approach um, addressing any things that uh, we need to before um, renewal um, and in in line with that um, I'll, if you don't already know it I know that um, because of um, some interest in their community that uh, Dunbarton has been talking with other places where they might tuition their students um, I believe that they will develop uh, and it's my understanding that they'll develop a committee um, to investigate those options um, and we'll use that as a foundation for talking about um, any things that they see as needs for their students. So I would anticipate that going forward we will hear not only about the results of those conversations and um, their focus groups, uh, we'll also hear about some things that they may believe either they're getting already um, that they aren't getting and that, they, that they'd like to see. Um, so it should be a good process and should dovetail nicely with the fact that we've got to revisit the AREA this year. Um, so we will be very, very busy and it will require everybody um, handling at least one or if not several. Um, commendations, good news. Oh, this would be your opportunity. <laughs> um, I talked to Mr. Hunt and Nicole, and I just wanted to, you know, what happened this summer? What could I report? Um, summer success, the summer program went well. Um, they felt that it was very academic this year. There were no major issues, and they wanted to let you know that it went well. Um, they had two big teacher workshops this summer that were very well attended. Just about 100% of the people that needed to be there went. Um, we had Dr. Paratori come from, um, she is actually the, one, of the, one of the women who um, developed the, the Reading Streets program that we um, bought for, 
for the elementary school. And um, so she came this past week. And then we had two more days of training to go over our reading streak stuff. That was very well attended. It went very well. She's a really outstanding speaker. Um, seventh and eighth grade also has their new reading program. And they got together three times um, to work on core reading programs. The new teachers that were hired also were involved in that. And that was, again, very well attended. Um, the building was getting ready at the middle school, and the gym floor was redone. It looks great, but I guess there was some minor flaw that is going to be fixed this week. Um, and the parking lot looks great, and that was pretty much all we had to report. Thank you very much. Do we know how um, the student, the high school student who went to Chicago for, is it the Stockholm Project? What happened? I don't know, but I can find out. I'd love to yeah, find out. I don't know. I'd love to follow up on that. Thank you. The, 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 the best part of that news was really um, what the staff is doing, mm -hmm. um, that, that we're continuing to focus on professional development, um, that there's a high rate of voluntary participation um, ahead of a hurricane and following <laughs> some great weather. Um, all really good news. Uh, and it really is going to, because these are new programs, it's going to require a fair amount of digging in and a collaborative effort. Good to know. Any other good news or commendations? Seeing none, we shall move along. Uh, any public comments? And seeing none, we shall move along. Uh, standing committee reports, admin and finance. Okay. You want, do we have three manifests here? Do you want to vote on them one at a time or all at once? One at a time. Okay. <clears throat> Manifest dating, dated July the 5th. It uh, covers from June 24th to June 30th. The total is three million one hundred twenty-eight thousand nine hundred seventy-seven dollars and twenty-eight cents. Of that, payroll, taxes, uh, health and dental benefits, total two million. Five hundred twenty thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars and twenty-nine cents. Special ed total is ninety-three thousand seven hundred eighty-one dollars and five cents. That was uh, bills from all well, the end of June, basically. Mary Jordan, teacher of the deaf, Shortridge Academy, Shortridge Academy, and Crouchet Mountain. General expenses total $84,100.90. For a grand total again of $3,128,977.28. Uh, do I have a motion to approve as presented? You do. A second? A second. Diane? Any questions, concerns, issues not addressed? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. It's unanimous. Next. Anybody wants any further detail, I've got a sheet here. Yes, friend. Second one. Again, this covers July the 1st through July 31st. <coughs> Excuse me. For a total of $1,703,929.87. Again, payroll, payroll taxes, health and dental benefits for June. This is a June run over $690,877.83. Special Ed, $116,211.75. And general expenses totaled $442,323.38. Again, for a total of $1,703,929.87. Any questions? Any details? Yeah. What, what's in? What's the big items in the general stuff? General stuff. Uh, GE capital one hundred twenty-one thousand four hundred ninety-eight dollars. That's for the high school and middle school laptop leases. Uh, Thirty-nine thousand for the uh, golf down uh, truck center. The uh, fuel surcharge for two ten. <coughs> and another big one was. Uh, $20,860 for hooks at paving, the ceiling for the uh, Mountain View Middle School. Those are the major 
for the for the laptops? Do we pay like upfront just for the whole year? Or do we? Yeah. We do. Okay. Yeah. So that takes care of this <coughs> fiscal the year. For like this are we paying year? at the end? <coughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, may I have a motion to approve as presented? I'll move. A second. Suzanne? All in favor? Opposed? And the last one. And the last one. For 829 was the uh, $1,610,833. Uh, payroll, payroll taxes and benefits, $818,218,233. The uh, special ed, believe it or not, was $10,270. That was for the uh, Here Clear system at Maple Ave. And what system? Here Clear, it's an FM system. Okay. Okay. And uh, general expenses, again, the total for that was $433,662. Uh, the major item of that was the SAU assessment of 248000 is the um, special, is the hearing piece an individual or a general need? It was probably several individuals at that cost. Yeah. It was probably, they're pro but they're probably oh, classroom okay. systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sounds like For it's individuals, yeah. yeah. We try not to buy the individual ones that go right. with the student versus the classroom system because then it benefits everybody. Right. And well, mm -hmm. again, you've got a total of 1.6 million. Um, any other questions? A motion to approve as presented. I'll move it. Second. I move it. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> Four. Abstention? <laughs> Unanimous. As I said, if anybody wishes to look at the detail. Okay. Anything else on your agenda, yeah. Hank? That's it. Human resources. I'm hoping to get in a meeting this month. I'm not sure if it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so if, can we jump to your meeting date? I have that under other, kind yes. of under my superintendent's notes, but that will help. So for the next two meetings, we, ha we have a meeting scheduled because of the way the month falls. We're meeting today. Your normal, so then we plugged in the 12th because it's like the second Monday versus the first Monday's a holiday, and then the 19th. So I don't know that the board needs to meet two weeks in a row. And so that was the question. We were going to wait till this meeting to decide how busy we were and how things were going. So I might recommend to the board that they just meet on the 19th um, versus the 12th, because it's only the 12th is going to be four days and right. then mm -hmm. um, four actual school days, and then we'll be back. So if you met on the 19th, it's like kind of two weeks, and then you'll have two weeks before your next meeting. Sounds good to um, let's, let's put something, let me throw something else out there, because I think this is the, the pie is a little bit bigger than that. If we use the 12th for um, the committee meetings, yeah. um, and see if you can end up there too. I also believe that we need to, and it, maybe it's not a September date, but it's got to be pretty close thereafter. We need to sit down in a board, as a board and make some decisions about negotiations, what the board collectively wants as a group. I think that can happen in a work session. Um, but that's whether or not we try to do that in the body of a meeting or separately. Um, let's figure that out now. I don't think you could do that in a work session. Now you, I also have some dates that um, when we get to it that I've gotten from the GEA or negotiation dates. One of them happens to be September 12th, um, 13th, 14th, 20, 26, 27. So we have some dates to think about there as well. You can meet as... Um, the negotiating team can meet to discuss negotiate. I think you can you can discuss negotiations in a workshop. It's not an open session because it's negotiations. You can meet at any time to do that. And the other possibility is is that we do it in a, again um, if we're discussing things generally as a spo as opposed to specifically. Um, I don't think it creates an issue. I think if it's if it's um, deeper than landscape then it probably needs to be something that is non-public yeah because i think we 
the board, uh, hopefully all nine of us, have to right. sit down and decide mm -hmm. where we're going with this. I agree. Um, and it may be that we want to, we may want to set aside time, depending upon the scope of our agenda, on the 19th for doing it then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we do that? Well, we'll and that, then we'll have the flexibility, depending upon content, of either doing it as uh, publicly or as a, uh, as a non-private work session. Non-public first session, excuse me. Um, so that brings us back to the 12th. Um, any, is that, will that work for you, Laura? The 12th would work for okay. HR. Um, and uh, for the time being, let's let's include c &E regularly okay. to follow that meeting, your meeting, Lori. Uh, and if for some reason it doesn't work for Jenny, um, we'll figure out what the alternative looks like. Okay. Anything else in terms of scheduling that's been left off? No, the table? that was just that's one of that. I was like, okay, that will tackle those two questions. All right. Um, the 12th. It's going to be the 19th now. Meeting the 19th. Um, and the only thing, Lori, that we need to discuss for your subcommittee is the next meeting date. Nothing else? Correct. Okay. Terrific. Everybody signed us tonight. Huh? Well, I said everybody signed. We need five. Uh, yeah. Ginny is not here, uh, and we've already made a decision on her next meeting. Uh, Diane? I'm here. Um, P and C, uh, we haven't met um, all summer, of course. Our next meeting is the 12th. I'll do, do you want to do that on the 19th? Yeah, no. I think we'll need to. We'll we change that to the 19th. Meet, yeah. Um, we have not done articles um, over the summer. But the intent, I would think, would be to hit resume doing our articles. Um, and we'll determine our column content at our next meeting. I think that sums us up. Do you want to, do we want to start like in two weeks and we can talk about this meeting? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. At least yeah. for PNC, at least get it going again yeah. before we meet on the 19th. Otherwise, it's going to be one? October. Okay. We can do that. Um, Suzanne, anything happen over the summer with budget committee? Nope. It's been blissfully quiet. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost a couple of members. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bellavo, did you also have a quiet summer? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> well, as regards budget committee. <laughs> no activity. No. Next month. Well, we had yeah. two members resign. Mm -hmm. so we'll be looking to fill those. So, so that leaves three seats open? Yes. Mm -hmm. You guys going to have your work cut out for you? Well, there were unusually more candidates than seats available. Mm -hmm. March, so it would be my personal preference that we ask those people. Yes. They obviously expressed an interest and got people to vote for them, so. Mm -hmm. But we shall see. Shall. I'll let you know at the next meeting. Okay. Budget can only be meet before. Um, Superintendent's I'll try to keep it short, but I have like two pages, so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, because it's been a long summer. All summer, yeah. Summer yeah. things going on I want to share. Um, to start with, I guess, uh, just an update on the storm. Um, we obviously in Gulfstown made out fairly well. We had really no damage in any of our schools. Um, we did cancel, um, I canceled sports practices this morning because I really wasn't sure going in what we were actually gonna, you know, how our buildings were gonna do if we were gonna have power. And it was just trying to get a hold of kids in a situation where you know you're not putting it on MU because we're not canceling school. We also had some tryouts, so where you don't necessarily know who all the kids are going to be. So we canceled that on Saturday. So Steve had ample time to get out the word to those kids. Um, we did did have new teacher orientation also scheduled for today. Um, we postponed that to tomorrow. Um, again, not knowing where people lived in the communities that they were coming from, we wanted to make sure everybody was safe. We didn't want to a new teacher to have their first experiencing drive, having to try to get here through a storm. So um, we did postpone that, but um, we had a little bit of water um, 
um, at Naval Lab in a spot that we normally do, but we had nothing major, no no problems at all. Um, I think we buckled up the buildings pretty well before we all left on Friday and made sure garbage cans were in, that there was not, everything was locked down and hatched up. So I think we did, uh, we were very proactive on that part of it. The trap, you know when they were rescheduled to? The, the ones what? that were this morning, the traps that were this morning, do you know when they were rescheduled I to? I don't, I don't. Um, Steve yeah, call Steve, okay. he'll know. Um, I did have conference calls every morning with the DOE. They do um, whenever we have these kinds of things. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this morning, we had conference calls with the state, with um, FEMA, emergency management, um, just keep it abreast of what's going on. And it is, there are a lot of communities still without power. So um, certainly there was an impact, it just wasn't here. So that's good for us. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of you have heard, um, I've emailed out, um, Jerry Agate was in a, a, in a really bad accident, continues to be out. We'll know more on September 8th. Um, in the meantime, um, I, I couldn't put Ray's, he was business manager, I couldn't add facilities director to his title, he wouldn't let me. Um, <laughs> so we have hired- Can I get a motion um, on that? Yeah. <laughs> I think being between Ray and I, we were a little getting over, a little overwhelmed, especially in the summer with all the projects going on and yeah. trying to get schools open. So um, we did hire John Rist, who is um, the principal, the retired principal from Central. Um, very experienced, he's done a fabulous job. He stepped right in um, as kind of a, a temporary Jerry um, because we, obviously getting our buildings up and running needed to happen. I need somebody to manage the custodian. So um, he is filling in. Unfortunately, it's, it's an unbudgeted fill. We don't have the money. We're gonna have to find the money in the budget um, to pay for him, but it was something that we really needed to do. I, we can't just, have nobody running our facilities um, so we are we are doing that John has done a great job um, I do want to commend Pat Palazzo and Jerry Paris um, for the three or four weeks that nobody was filling in Pat jumped in she did what she needed to do she coordinated all the custodians ordered supplies um, I she just stepped it up and really did a fabulous job so I do want to commend them um, the two of them for really stepping in and with a little direction really did what they needed to do. I'd also want to thank Ray, um, who also helped out tremendously um, when I came to him with purchase orders and said, I don't know what this is, help us. So uh, we pieced it together. So I do want to thank them all for their efforts. Um, we've got had lots of summer projects going on. Um, I think we're ready. The buildings look clean. They're beautiful. School starts on Tuesday. Um, so I, I think we are ready to go. We had lots of trainings this summer, as Barb said. We had Reading Streets training, um, seventh and eighth grade, our new literacy program, we had training. Um, Glen Lake um, had training in the OWLS, which is a new assessment piece we're adding at the preschool, kindergarten level. Um, we had lots of teachers attend AP training. While I will add, while it's great for our AP courses that we teach, you have to have the training to do it. I think it's also a huge benefit to our teachers, even if they're not teaching an AP class to go, because what you do is you get that high level intensity of how to teach really about thinking about content. And so it really um, strengthens our teachers' skills when they do that. And um, we had last week smart board training as part of buying those smart boards. We required all the teachers to do it. And I can tell you, I stopped in, I was there for about an hour and a half, and I have never seen 20 teachers more excited about something. Um, they were just, so excited to get their hands on them, to get them moving. Um, it, just the energy in the room was wonderful. So I think we're gonna see some great things out of that. Um, we had wonderful summer programs go on. Um, we had our special ed side. For the first time, we kind of separated the two programs a bit because we, as you know, with the budget cuts, we didn't do summer boost. So we did offer um, a summer program for our Title I students using Title I funds. Um, and so we, because they're Title I funds, you can't mix the program. So we had a separate special ed program and a special separate Title I program. But um, we did have good turnout and responses for those, and I think those went very well. We've been very busy hiring over the summertime. Busy, busy, busy. We have all of those to bring forward tonight. Um, we did get news from Crispin's house um, two weeks ago um, that they don't have the funds. I think it was pretty public that they don't have the funds to continue the program. Um, and so, um, the Y is looking to bring a program to the Y to help support those kids, whether it's at the Y, whether it's here. I think they're still working at logistics. Um, Ray and I also have also talked about maybe um, if that doesn't pan out or if, even if it does, do we maybe go out to bid and see if there's another program, out, another company out there who would like to take on owning the program at the middle school. I do think we had enough kids there that it would support a program. So um, we're kind of exploring that as an option, um, maybe not for this year, but for next year to help kids and support them. 
we have good programs running at the elementary school. So the question is, does that, you know, are there companies out there that would want to take on the middle school population? I, I did share with the board chairs, um, although I share this with the rest of the board, Betty Ann Noyes, who's a new Boston, a Dunbarton board member, um, has been in the hospital, um, and it's uh, she's been in the hospital for about two weeks. The doctors have determined that she cannot live without the, the, she's on a respirator right now. Without that, the family has determined that they're going to disconnect it either tonight or tomorrow. Um, so it is likely in the next couple of days that she will pass away. So I did want to share that as a, she is a board member in Dunbarton, and I will share once that happens with the board um, when the services are, if somebody wanted to attend that. But um, we'll continue to think about her, and, you know, she's been a board member, I think, in Dunbarton for a long, long time, I think 20 or 30 years. So, oh, yeah, easily. Um, yeah. So that's a, a sad thing happening. She was a veteran board member when I came on in 85. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She had been on for yeah. at least 10 or 12 years. So she's been involved in a lot in Dunbarton, yeah. and so it'll be, oh, a, yeah. it'll be a loss for Dunbarton. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Um, the, awesome. As you know, last year, at the end of the year, we spoke. Um, the high school went before the State Board of Education. Um, they had wanted us to talk about, um, Frank had spoken at a, a kind of a best practices on innovative strategies um, at the high school level and um, one of the state board members was there and was very impressed with what they talked about so they asked them to come back um, to the state board and do a presentation so we had the opportunity to do that in June um, the high school staff did a great job I think it talked about that at a board meeting um, the state board has asked if they can come to Gosstown High School and see what we do um, so they're actually gonna hold one of their meetings here and their October meeting here at the mm -hmm. high school um, we'll have them for about two hours to talk about what we do here at Gosstown High School and why we do so well and what we're doing that helps us get do these scores and then they'll have the regular meeting here um, as a public so I think that's on October 12th I'm trying to still confirm up the date but um, it looks like that will be the day um, so I'll certainly send that out if board members want to attend or be present for that you're more than welcome um, Lou D'Alessandro has also contacted me and um, again we've we've done really well with our test scores we've done a lot of innovative things in the district um, he wants to come spend the day here so that he too can see what great things we're doing in golf. There you go, so, Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> so I am working on arranging a day for him to come in and spend the day in our schools and um, not to leave Ivan out on his day of the high school. So one of the things that has been my goal is to develop kind of a, a, a citizen's academy, kind of a how, what do we do in our schools? How do we get the information out? And so I'm working at a five night workshop series to do that. I originally had planned in September and October thinking I would get it done before budget season started, but there was a, I was overwhelming myself. So it's going to be one day a month, um, and the culminating event for that, if you come to at least one of those five nights, the culminating event will be to spend the day at the high school, um, shadowing students. We'll have it all set up and arranged and probably do some showcase kind of stuff. But um, we were, I was trying to figure out a way to get out to the public kind of what we do in our schools. Um, in an informal way where we can talk about that, answer questions. And so like one night we'll be focused on the budget, one night we'll be focused on kind of student services, what is special ed, what is 504, what do guidance counselors do, um, what does administration do, um, one night we'll be kind of what do we live with, what is No Child Left Behind, what is a Cine and Dinny, and um, what is Title I, all of those kind of services. So we've kind of got different nights so people can pick and choose, people can come to all of them. But that culminating event would be kind of come shadow a student for the day and actually get the real life experience here at the high school. So watch for more information on that. I'm hoping to get some press releases out this week um, on that. Um, I did want to pass around, and this is just a reminder, your committee assignments. Um, since it's a new year, I'd just like to remind you all how easy we forget um, <laughs> if you've lost the sheet of paper. Um, <laughs> Over the summer, Ray and I met with the bus company, and again, as part of the um, requirement of their new contract, um, they had to purchase this busware mapping software, and so that is full up and running at this point in time. We met with them, we looked at runs, um, we actually were able to eliminate one bus um, by looking at runs, so it's a start. Um, Ray and I will continue to monitor that throughout the year, but obviously that's a cost savings of one bus that we're not paying for. Um, so that was that was a, a nice kind of find as we were looking through them. Um, we also looked at, we combined a couple of runs so that we can, one of the, the areas that's always been a concern is Mountain View and Maple Ave at the end of the day. School gets out at 310 and oftentimes buses don't come till 350, um, that last bus, so by 
adding and moving some runs, we were able to shorten that. So we think we've done two things. One is we think that the last bus will arrive at 3.30, um, which I'm thinking Barb is nice. happy about. That's our goal is 3.30. The other is that we've worked with the police department. We had a meeting with them last week. And at Mountain View, one of the pieces of the puzzle that snags the buses is when the parent line backs up onto Lauren Lane and then Tibbetts Hill when the buses get stuck in that. And so we have a police officer going to spend five days training a couple of people to kind of be at the bottom of Lauren Lane where the curve is and allow stop cars and allow the buses to go in the other lane and up to go up the left side so that we'll be able to free up the buses to get up there as opposed to sitting in traffic. Um, and so that again should help move the traffic along. So again, we're all trying to think outside of the box on how to how to make things better and that was one of the solutions and um, we met with the chief and an officer and they were very supportive of it because obviously once it starts backing up onto to its hill it's a safety concern for them as well so um, we're going to try it for the first five days with police assistance and see if it works and helps out so that should help as well um, we got school approval for all of our schools this year um, we are set and ready to go 100 percent approval if you remember last year we had conditional approval at the high school because of um, we needed to correct some fire things we corrected those we have 100% approval for all of our schools uh, retirement costs at the end of last year um, if you remember we cut or actually we didn't fill several positions because we needed to come up with $622,000 for the anticipated retirement costs um, they did renegotiate and recalculate those costs and so we're looking at about 400,000 of that coming back into being able to spend from what they've told us um, although we're not jumping and spending it yet or replacing those positions because there's a couple other pieces to the puzzle that we needed to cover. Um, one of them was vocational uh, tuition. So the state cut back on those. So we needed to come up with, I think it was about $50,000. Yeah. We had 88 yeah. students registered to the go to the vocational program. So to allow all of them to go, um, we needed to come up with about $50,000. And so the high school, we just slashed their budget until we got that, until we knew this money. So about 50,000 of that will get eaten up by that. We're still waiting on oil. We have not, um, Ray's been working diligently on going out to bid and different talk, talking to different vendors, but it's still, um, it's way up there. We budgeted 269, it's coming in at three. It's about 313 now. Yep, so we anticipate needing some of that to pay for oil prices. Um, so we're waiting to um, filter out all the staffing changes we've had, just where do we fall with staff who changed health insurance plans so did somebody go from a single plan get married and have baby you know so where did they go on their plans where did the new hires come in at for hiring um, for the first time ever um, I had to say to them if they wanted to bring somebody in at a higher rate than what the person was before they had to freeze dollar amounts because we just don't have the wiggle room in this budget so um, we frozen money to be able to hire if we had a, a staff member who was excellent that we were looking to hire that was coming in higher um, we've frozen money so some of that will need to be taken into account and things like needing to fill Jerry's position for however long that is that's money that's not budgeted that we'll need to find so um, we X Ray and I are gonna probably meet in the, over the next month and flesh that out and see where we go and see what staff we can bring back with what's left after that so, so we're just under a hundred thousand dollars light on like 200,000 gallons a year on the oil. Yeah, yeah. Um, 90,000 is the number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think Barb touched on the gym floor at Mountain View. Um, it was, it, it looks beautiful when you stand away from it. It's a, it looks like a different gym. If you haven't been there, it hasn't been done since the gym um, was built. Um, it is beautiful. Like it, it looks like a whole new gym. Although I will say now the bleachers look really bad. <laughs> um, we were. Um, I got several phone calls and I went over and met with the contractor. We were very disappointed with the paint job they did. Um, they put only one coat on it, and you can see the lines where they painted. Um, he will be back um, on September first and second to repaint those. Um, he agreed that it didn't look great. Um, he said the contract was for one coat. I said, if you knew it was going to look like this, we should have had a conversation. And so um, he is going to own it and come back on the first and second and repaint it so it will look better um, and meet what we were yeah, but expecting. Not but are not the lines painted under the urethane? Yes, he's going to do what he needs to do. Yeah, he'll strip it down. Oh, and then okay. Redo, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, he'll, he'll do it right. 
Um, but I just wanted to I like, just didn't want to see the yeah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. No. Um, they'll do it, but they're just going to do the red is what I asked it to redo because that's different what, colors now. <laughs> yeah, that's what looks the worst is mm -hmm. the red, so he's going to come back and fix that. Um, we also, um, interestingly, Walmart and the national companies are now looking to brand high school, so they're looking to be able to sell Goffstown High School wear. So um, as part of this, we did. I signed a licensing agreement over the summer so we can maybe make some money. So for every, we're going to allow them to sell Goffstown wear, but for everything they sell, we'll get a portion of that proceed for using our name. Um, and that was something Is there NHS. Is to that where nobody else can use it? In the contract? Um, it was through NHIAA. It's not with a specific company, but NHIAA is managing it. Um, so that if, if somebody asked to use it, um, they would. But there's no, it's not from the limitation to say no. a local vendor to no, sign No, no, not, not at all. Oh. Not at all. No. Um, so we did do that. The building committee has been meeting all summer on both the Mar Bar Bartlett and Mabel Lab projects. Um, we are moving right along. We have some preliminary drawings, some great ideas, and um, I expect that at your next board meeting on the 19th, we'll come with kind of the proposal of what we're looking at so that the board can get an idea of where we're at at that point. Um, so I did also today actually get a proposal from the town um, that they're looking to do, and I don't know if this is, I don't know, it's called a conceptual subdivision plan. I don't know if that's just kind of going out there off of, I'm going to probably say it wrong, Lesnick Road, Lesnick. Lesnick Road for 12 a 12 lot subdivision yeah. um, so again I sent in the letter yeah. saying you know do what you want but our schools are full you have to mm -hmm. think about that what that what 12 single-family houses will bring to our district in an over already overcrowded situation so um, I just got that today so we sent that in um, I think that's all I have it's a wrap-up of my summer <laughs> you want me to talk about that? or I will okay, okay. Um, it probably should have come around in correspondence, but it just came in today, so it didn't get from me to the folder. So um, this is from NEASNC, uh, dated June of this year. Um, it follows the meeting of, of the Commission on Public Elementary and Middle Schools uh, and uh, reviewed the two-year progress reports submitted by MVMS. Um, they're really happy. Um, they admire the fact that the community has done so well to maintain its school and its accreditation status at a time when the economics of doing so are difficult. They specifically cite the following. Uh, the addition of the position of Dean of Students to improve communication and discipline. The purchase of cameras for building and buses for security and safety purposes. The use of power school as a means to make data available and usable for teachers. Um, and I would say also parents, even though they didn't. Um, the development of a variety of communication techniques to convey information both internally and externally, again, speaks to our goal of improving our communication with our community. Uh, the establishment of a process by which faculty can provide input into faculty meeting agendas, the expansion of the use of information center volunteers, the equitable distribution of counseling caseloads, the relocation of the guidance offices to provide more appropriate privacy, and the reorganization of the maintenance department. Um, that's what they had to say. If you'd like to read it, I'll pass it around. Uh, again, that continues to be, um, have been a good decision. Um, I think it benefits the school and what's going on at the school to have that extra set of eyes looking at it. Um, and we continue to be one of the few middle schools in the state that receives accreditation from that organization. Old <laughs> um, business. I see none yeah. here. I think we've touched on bunches of it. Mm -hmm. um, AREA. So this is, um, I, I was reviewing the area agreement and the legal requirements of an area agreement. And lo and behold, in order to um, have an area agreement, you have to have it on the ballot two years prior to the expiration, which would mean this March of 12, we have to have um, something on the ballot. 
So after researching it, I got, sought some legal advice because um, the law is very vague. Um, and so I was needed to seek some legal advice, which interestingly we saw 10 years ago when we went through this process, kind of what the process looks like. And so there's two parts that um, the three boards would participate in. One would either be kind of a an extension review slash um, amendment of the agreement, which would be you'd be extending it to the minimum is 10 years. You'd be extending it to some period of time and might amend or review it. Um, so you might make just small changes to it. At, if that is the case, then you would just put on the warrant would be that you're looking to extend, all three communities would be looking to extend it um, for the period of 10 years. You can renegotiate or you can renegotiate it which would mean you're throwing the document away and you're starting fresh. If that is the case, what would be on the ballot would be approval to renegotiate the area agreement. <coughs> okay. um, Ray and I have spoken and given that the area agreement seems to work. Um, it's our recommendation that what, what basically has to happen is one of the three boards needs to send notice to the other boards that they would like to begin the process of either renegotiating or extending, reviewing, amending it um, to make that to make the process start to happen. So um, I guess you're the first board I'm meeting with, so I put it out there as you're obviously the, the bigger board and the, obviously the one with the most stake in this at this moment in time. So I didn't know if this board wanted to have conversation about what direction you wanted to go in if you wanted to send a letter to the other two boards. Um, I would need to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to send a letter to the other two boards. Okay. Um, asking them to entertain. Um, not necessarily renegotiate, but considering either renegotiating or extending the current contract for a period of time. Okay. Um, would somebody either like to second that or would you like to have a discussion first? I'll take either one. Discussion? Okay. All right. Discussion. Who, who would like to speak first? Question, Hank. You put this on a ballot. You say we want to. Uh, are you asking permission? In other words, what happens if the voters say no? Then that's why I, th I believe that's why you do two years ahead of time, so you have time then the next two years to figure out what the next step would be. Okay. Does the RSA give any advice in that direction? It gives none. <laughs> Um, the other question, just so you know, the other question that was asked um, was at the end of this 10-year agreement, can a district just walk away? Um, because there's lots of statutes about um, withdrawal from the agreement. No. And in fact, well, actually, yes, they can. No. And in fact, that was what the attorney said 10 years ago was, yes, at the end of 10 years, a district can walk away from an area agreement. However, they have to have a plan, so they would have to be withdrawing from an agreement. They had to have to leave, but they don't have to go through. There's a whole withdrawal process if you choose to withdraw before the agreement actually expires. Um, but they would need to be doing that. So that was just a question that had come up as well. Could you, could you clarify that because I, 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 had a, I thought it was a little bit different. I thought sending districts could walk away from the contract at the end of the period, but the receiving district had to give more notification than that, I thought. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I think actually, anybody but... Actually, both sides have parameters around how they may behave and how they have to give notice. They may be... I don't recall the details, but I do remember the, the discussion that we had 10 years ago. Um, or actually, it's probably eight years ago now. Um, yeah. But there are limitations. You can't just pull up stakes and disappear. Right. You can't just leave another district high and dry right. that has nowhere. I mean, the Department of Ed won't approve that. And, and nor, um, nor can, nor may a district that is sending its students simply walk away. It doesn't work that way. Um, I think that, and looking at, at the last eight years and the AREA agreement that we've been existing under, there I believe have been not any more than three issues that I can only think of two that we've managed to um, address and get through. So I would go even further that, that the letter that we send would simply say, we, sit to, we seek to sit down at the table and extend. I mean, I, prefer, I would prefer just to extend it. Yeah. Yes. That's well, my preference. Again, that's the invitation, so. Yep. So. Um, I would support that. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that makes sense. Makes sense? Yeah. Um, then, then, because there hasn't been a second, 
Keith, would you care to restate your motion and make it more limited? Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we send a letter to both the bus and Dan Barton, ask him to sit down and meet in regards to extending the current contract, current area agreement. Excuse me. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Opposed? Extensions? Three unanimous. I will um, draft a letter for you, Philip. Great. I guess the most important thing to talk about in terms of negotiation is dates. We have some proposals from GEA and we still have yet to hear from GSS. Yes, correct. GEA actually on the same day we sent our letter to them requesting that Philip sent, we got a letter from them requesting. So um, we are all set. I have some proposed dates so we can look at those now or we can look at them after the meeting. Okay. Um, I, I guess the, the you after the meeting for a while. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, Philip. It, it, that's fine. Um, as it currently stands, the people who populate the negotiations are Keith and Suzanne and I. Um, if for some reason anybody wants to um, see their uh, membership on or role on that group, um, feel free to do so. We can discuss it afterwards because uh, because we all know how much time those take. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. maybe after me we could talk yeah. about, we need to set a, a more rigid timeline, I think, this time around. Okay. Especially doing two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we'll, okay, then we'll do some follow-up. Yeah. Uh, and GSS, um, if we don't hear from them within another week or so, now okay. they send them another note. Because that was something that, that we agreed back in um, December, I think, it that we would do. That it was it was our collective intent to really sit down in in March after the right. vote. After the vote, um, and we're a little bit behind the eight ball. We've given up what, five months. Okay, I can do. If I don't hear from them by say Tuesday, I'll yeah. send them a letter. Great. Uh, is this is just my request to ask HR to look at two policies. Mm -hmm. One is admission of resident students, and this came up at our actually at our retreat this summer. We did some work on um, residency issues and residency concerns, and the um, administration would like the HR committee to review um, what the parents must provide as proof of residence. Um, and there are two questions. There are two concerns. Are one is can we add they must be current utility bill, you know, current bills, current per, you know, something that's current. It doesn't say that in there. Um, the other, um, it says, in the unusual case that these are not available, a signed and notarized statement of residence must be submitted. Can we be very, can we just reword that? We want it to be very clear that the notary is notarizing that that is their residence, that it's not their signature. Okay. Um, we just want it to be clear that the notary is saying that this is their residence. Just out of curiosity, um, is that within the notary's well, I don't, capacity? Well, no, it isn't. It that, isn't. Sounds, that sounds a little bit so further So if it than isn't, then we would like that taken out because okay. really all it takes is somebody to confirm that that's their signature but not their residence. Um, it has nothing to do so, with the authenticity of the veracity uh, the, of the right, document. Yeah. The document. It only has to do with their signature. Right. right. And so what we're finding now in certain situations is people are bringing these letters in and we're saying, well, you're just authenticating the signature. How do we know yeah. this is really who's authenticated that you actually live there? So we would like HR to look at those two, that those two things on that policy. And that, <coughs> those are both in JFAA. Yes. Okay. And then under the other one, um, EBBD on air quality, um, the new law requires an anti-idling policy. So we would just like that added to that policy. Something on anti-idling, and MC has all the information on that you can't sit outside the school, school the right and we'd like to really start to enforce that and so if we have it in our policy we can put signs up and start to enforce anti-idling how do you plan to enforce things tell parents to turn their cars off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the, the winter how many you think are going to be compliant well we'll bring the police i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying but at least we have to start at least with a policy and informing parents and being able to put signs up. Right now, we don't have it in our policy policies. that you're not going to be able to enforce yes. not in the winter. Well, it's good practice, and so it is good practice. It is and good just practice. the effort of saying, "Please turn off your car." I think there are a lot of people who will say, "Oh, okay," you know, 
It's not like they're Diane, in the I, in I propose car. that you be standing outside Mountain View Middle School in that long line and go down and tell every parent, and on your way back up, count how many were complying for you. Well, well at least I've been at the same time. Proximity of the building. I'll turn my car off. I'll give you the bag of potatoes for your trip back up the hill. Proximity to the building. That's the way it's. And it's, I mean, it's to keep, it's to, the main focus of it started with keeping buses from parking out front where the windows are open and idling. And now, so at Maple Ave, where they're parked out front, where there's windows right there at Barley, you know, it's turn your car off while you're there. If they're in the street parked, they don't have to turn it. It's, it's the, within the proximity of the building, but it is the law. And so we just want to include the law as part of our policy so that we can begin to at least put signs up and enforce it, which we should, is what we should be doing. It's typically so. like six cars that applies to, right. it's not a lot of car lengths. Yeah, right. that can, can fit inside in front of our well, buildings. That breeze is coming up. The a lot of it has to do with uh, the buses, too, with the diesel well, fuel. The diesel engine yeah. is your biggest culprit, is what they're trying to yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. No, okay, so final school board meeting minutes. minutes. So, I, I came across an interesting thing that we do here in Goffstown. <coughs> I, I think we do it. We do it in Denmark, but we don't do it in New Boston. When you approve minutes that are amended, we don't actually go back and change the minutes. Nope. We just put them as amended. And I do believe we should be amending them, and yeah. those should be the final document that's posted. Yeah. I don't know. It go, this goes way back. I asked Denise, and she's like, oh, since I've been here, that's how we've always done them. Yeah. <laughs> 30 years, you think, and probably? And so I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense, because you're amending them, and you're approving the amended well, minutes. So yeah, but there's always right. the caveat at the end of every minute saying that these minutes may be amended. You must review the minutes of the following right. meeting to. Right. but catch any I, yeah so I mean you can keep going that I just think proper process would be that you actually go back and amend the minutes and then the amended minutes are what goes in your final as your final document um, I would agree with that yeah. I, I mean, so I'm just looking user for friendly. kind of like because otherwise you have minutes and it, it, years, you can read problems. them unless you look at the next minutes right. to know what was so changed just, right. just out of curiosity nobody got theory, picky about it this really <laughs> is a cut and paste operation Right, because be, you yeah. take the amendment, you move it from the minutes in which the amendment was offered and voted on, and put them in, it. actually change your minutes, right. and okay. then those are the ones you approve. Correct. Those That's are fine. technically the ones you've approved. We're, we're I don't know if you're cutting from. I mean, not to get too. Right, you can. <laughs> I don't you think you're cutting from the minutes in there. of the week where you fix it. You can probably still keep sure. in your minutes oh. where you where fix you fixed it, it. But, but then you go back and change the minutes and fix them. You're going to copy. Make a motion to ask the administration to please address the issue and come up with the proper solution. Thank you. I just I wanted the okay to go ahead and change them, but I didn't want to like just change a process that's been happening apparently for a long time. We have no idea why we've been doing it that way, so we'll just fix it. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. So Residence so request. I have one request um, for residency. Amazingly, only this year. Um, this is a family. They have a um, ninth grader starting at Gothtown High School. They are moving. Um, they are renting an apartment beginning October 1st. Um, and so they are. I have a copy of the lease for October 1st. I have a copy of it signed. It's the full lease. Um, and they would like to be able to enroll their daughter at Gotstown High School for the start of the school year, as opposed to, she's, they're from Manchester, starting in Manchester, and then moving here October 1st, so. In what part of town are they renting? They are renting right, I believe it is Main Street. Okay. 46 Main Street. Oh, the paperwork looks good, and then you saw the lease. Okay. Move, we Move approve that. the request. Yeah. Um, and there's a second. Uh, I'll well, second it. One of us will. Suzanne and I both moved in. So. <laughs> <laughs> my, my own question is obviously it's, it's going to be based on actually, actually enrolling on October 1st. Yep. If they don't actually take a lease on October 1st. Yeah. Yeah, they have a signed lease and they have a deposit already paid, so we have documentation of that. Yeah, so. I would imagine they would follow through, but if we find out October 2nd is still living yeah. in Manchester. Yeah. All, all in favor? Opposed? Extensions? What are you doing? Okay. Well, I usually do this with five people. <laughs> <laughs> and the last is all the rest, which is a, some confirmation, some hires. Um, I'll pass them. Agent. It is front and back. Yes, it is. Um, so let's, we'll start at the top and we'll do it section by section. So we have three teacher resignations. Um, Anna DeVilder um, moved out of state. Um, Sandrin Taylor Weiser 
Kentucky. I'm sorry to say that one. Um, also moved. She moved back to New Jersey, where she came from. And um, Ed Potoma, who was a, um, we hired as an eighth grade science teacher at the end of the year, unfortunately passed away over the summertime. Um, and so we just have to bring his resignation because you had actually hired him. Um, so that's a, a sad thing that happened. Um, so I'm looking for you to accept those resign or actually confirm the resignations. I've already accepted them. Do you have a motion? Hank, Lori seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, I also approved a one-year leave of absence for Britt Ledoux. Um, she's a special ed teacher at Glen Lake um, who had a baby four months early, um, five months early, very, very small. Um, I believe the baby may be home at this point in time, but she has requested a one-year leave of absence for child care. Um, and so I did accept that. So I'm, again, just looking for your confirmation of that. Mm -hmm. a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. No, second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? We're good. Okay. Um, then you see the list of teacher confirmations. Um, I can fill you in on any of them um, that you're interested in. I can point out some of them um, that look will probably look familiar. Uh, Mike French is not Mike French. Uh, the old police chief. I, you know, I have to get a call from the resident. Why do you know why he's coming to teach? Yes. <laughs> that is not I'm Michael like, French. That's a one. very different Michael French who will be teaching seventh grade math. Um, Mark Gagne, eighth grade social studies, is another name. Um, Mark was a budget cut, um, but we had, if you recall, last year at the end of the year, you approved a teacher, took a leave of absence from the high school. So the teacher who was moving to the middle school is going to stay at the high school, fill that one year leave of absence. So we were able to bring Mark back um, as a teacher at the middle school, so that's a nice thing. Um, Jill McPhail was a part-time special ed teacher at Glen Lake. Um, she is going to fill Britt Ledoux's one-year leave of absence, so she's another familiar face that you've seen before. So she'll take the one-year position and then, um, let's see, there's a... Up above, Diane Cloutier is a 50% special ed. She's That's a one-year position to fill Jill's position. So we just kind of shifted around a little bit. Um, if you see Ann Mello, um, media specialist at Bartlett, and Joyce Pang, music at Bartlett. Um, the media specialist and then below, the reading specialist, those were one position of Bridget McNamee. Bridget, we moved asked to move back into a classroom, so we put her in a classroom. And what we did was split out those two positions to give us more flexibility um, with them and time frames. So we were able to hire two part-time people to fill those. The 40% music position, um, that was, was a full-time position shared between Mountain View, again, as we've looked at schedules and calendars and trying to figure out what is best for kids. Um, that position being shared wasn't working because David had to plug music in whenever the person, because Mountain View's schedule was much more static, we had to plug them in. So it ended up that music was happening at times when reading should be happening, or it was half an hour reading, and then we plugged music in, and then we had more reading. And so in the best interest of kids, we split those two positions, we split out those two positions, um, and we're able to find somebody to fill those. Shelly Rines is a Title I teacher. That will be, a, I believe that's the one-year position. We had some um, additional ARA funds that we needed to spend, and so that, again, will be just a one-year position, um, but providing some more supports to Bartlett. Um, and the rest are fairly typical. So I'm, again, just looking for your confirmation on those hires, because I've already hired them. No motion? So moved. Seconded. Moved. Keith seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Extensions. Good to go. Okay, so good. Uh, we just have one track change confirmation. Erica Sweat at Mountain View is moving from her bachelor's to her bachelor's plus 15. Sixth grade teacher? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to remember who she was. Yeah. So that's why. No, you don't need to do anything. That's just information. Um, we have four co-curriculars that I actually need nominations for. Um, these were student council, um, and I, I know Ginny had some questions about them. She had asked me um, how many student council members we had last year. Um, so I did talk to some. Jim was able to get some information. Um, student council 
after talking to some of the advisors who have been longer term advisors, um, they have seen numbers drop as the years go on. They did see a significant number drop when we stopped the late bus. Um, because it used to be an after-school activity, and so kids no longer had trans and it wasn't a lengthy activity. The kids no longer had transportation home, so um, they do see their numbers as lower. They've kind of moved it from total student council to more student government um, to look at what can students do more positively because they don't have enough to do really large activities. So it became more student government, but um, and I think they meet with Jim. They talk about kind of what other changes. Like I know there was they when Megan started in the lunch room, they were all concerned about what we were serving for lunch now, and so Jim helped and set up a meeting with Megan and the student and the student government to talk about why those changes happened and what we could do and what were they looking for. And um, I think they still support some dances and things like that, but. Um, I know Jenny had that question, so that was the answer to her question. So I do need a nomination for those because those are not those were not approved. A motion. Oh, excuse me. I'll make a motion. Second by Lori. Yes, All in, any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. One abstention. the back um, are all of the athletic co-curricular confirmations um, and again these are confirmations I've already hired them um, some of the new I know the board always asks who are the new coaches um, Jennifer Ouellette is new teaching um, coaching B team field hockey Amy Stilfen is new teaching JV basketball girls Chris La Rochelle is new teaching freshman football John Trissiani is new teaching JV football or coaching. Sam Galatis is new teaching, doing coaching JV um, boys soccer, although he was a volunteer last year, so he's familiar with the program. And Sarah Tower is new doing JV girls soccer. All the rest are returning. I need a motion. Just to confirm. To confirm. So moved. Suzanne, second by. Mm -hmm. Diane. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? We're good. I have a question. Stacey, you were talking about the um, late bus impacting student council. Is this the first negative we've heard with discontinuing the um, late bus service? I know I've heard that I've heard that it had an impact on the Crispin's program at the middle school after school program I think the biggest impact we I've heard about has been from Mountain View I mean mm -hmm. obviously it's Mountain View in the high school I think because high school kids have other access to things so they have friends who drive mm -hmm. it's less noticeable at the high you you're likely to hear less complaints at the high school that we've cut the service because kids will find other ways at the middle school, I think it has impacted programming, and I see Barb shaking her oh, yeah. head. It has impacted because kids can, you know, even things like you know, staying after school with teachers. You know, you you, you couldn't do that because you, ha you had to have someone pick your pick you up. So some kids didn't have that accessibility. You know, they could stay after with me because mom wasn't going to get to work till six o'clock, and there wasn't someone to pick them up. So yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. So it doesn't impact just athletics and no, no, absolutely, absolutely not. yeah. Um, especially middle school where you, yeah. you have to have a parent to come get exactly. You. Yeah. you know, if you're a junior, you likely have friends who drive, and so if you need to get to a sports practice or you need to stay after school for something, there's likely somebody else you know staying, and you can get a ride home. Um, can we put a finger on that impact as we go? Do you think just kind of follow? Sure, as I hear things. Yeah. Um, might be something to consider reinstating if we can find the funds. Well, I think we tried. <laughs> well, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, we, we, we put it back in budget. the budget. I mean, I think, on, I'll be honest, there's other positions that I think are way more critical right now. Um, being down one technician it has, mm -hmm. like, Gary's ready to pull his hair out. Um, and it's going to be, you know, what used to be if a teacher laptop mm -hmm. had a problem a day or two, they'd get a response. It, it may be a week or two before they get a response, which means they're going to have no technology. We just down one technician We're, we have a lot of equipment in our districts I mean he, they fix Gary fixes everything from our phones copy machines to every laptop every computer every 
you know, every Proxima, if we have a problem, their team fixes it and their team is down He's one. He's even been known to fix a jam stapler. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think while I support the late bus, I think there's other positions that I think we, I, would put, I would put people back in before I put that back in. Yeah, I was just looking um, for some quantification. Yeah. Just some more data yeah. so yeah. we could take well, a good well, look. I don't know if I would care because the late bus obviously is directly impacting kids and what mm -hmm. they can and can't participate in in school. Well, and, and, and I understand about the rest of it, but we're here for kids. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's worth noting that we have some experience um, in the not very distant past with um, pushing resources away from things that require upkeep and investment. Um, and I would not want to find ourselves, in terms of technology, in the same position that we mm -hmm. found ourselves in terms of renovating our high school. While mm -hmm. I'm thrilled at the building that we have now, um, in much the same way it's important to do upkeep on that daily, the same is true of our technology capital. Yeah, especially when our technology is getting nothing but older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and so on, on balance, I'm a little bit, like as, as Sue is, a little disappointed that we can trace easily some impact to students in ways that we really like to see them benefiting. Um, you know, we, we can't provide Crispins with the budget necessary to operate the program, but if they're here and students can't take advantage of it because of transportation issues, um, we need to start, you know, what, like, I need to borrow your phrase. Um, Which one? I have some get, getting outside the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no box. Um, there is no box. There is no box. Great. Um, you know, so so maybe there there's some opportunities out there, but we're we're faced with a time when the decisions are going to become more and more apparent Absolutely. to yep. people because their impact is clearer and uh, more easily defined. Anyway, and that's all she wrote. It does say personnel under non-public, but that was a carryover from last meeting. I don't have anything, so. Okay. Any, any other new business to come before the board? Thank you very much. Welcome back. Oh, just remind people that on the, for the GEA and GEA yep. committees exactly. for us to stay and come up with some dates to give back to you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lori? I'll make a motion to adjourn them. What? Oh, well, well, can I call that non-public? No. 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 Well, no, unless you have something you'd like to specifically request. Would you, would you like to? A personnel thing for like five minutes, if that long? Yeah. Sure. If, if I'll withdraw mine and make a motion for non-public. Second. Go second? Okay. Right, so um, and, <coughs> and, 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 and the purpose would the be? Personnel matter. For personnel matter? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know the RSA number. Sorry. Okay. I won't hold you to it. We'll assume that, that it'll get captured. Yes, it's a. Don't do that. You sound like your father. Don't do that. <laughs>